welcome back to the Ed Morrissey Show podcast. Joining me as always, the prince of Twitter, the regent of redstate.com, Andrew Malcolm at A.H. Malcolm on the Twitters. Is Andrew, welcome back. Great talking to you again. Thank you. Yeah, it's a weekly thing. It's not a week. It's not a proper week unless Ed and I talk. I feel the same way. And feel- and settle and settle finally some of the major issues of the time. Oh yes, we're gonna settle. We're gonna settle everything. I mean when when what, this podcast uh, is over, it will be a new era of peace, love, and understanding. Well, <laughs> that's that's true. And uh I got a call from the White House, Ed, and uh, they wanted us to make sure that we uh that we talked about the president's remarks. He's remarking on the uh, bridge that fell down in baltimore yeah that's a yeah and cargo ship ran into it i mean it wasn't it's not an issue of whether or not the bridge had a safety issue i mean when you ram a huge cargo ship into a pillar the it's going to collapse i mean there's i mean it just uh that 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 was a big bridge it's a huge bridge it was um built in 1976 and it was in good shape it had nothing to do with the shape of the bridge um from what uh, I saw this morning, this um, it was a 948 foot, you know, uh, container barge, um, fully loaded, coming out of the port of Baltimore, and just lost control. They lost control of it. And- they lost. They lost power, so they couldn't control. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, they, what a mess. Um, but the important thing, Ed, is which will make things all right, is that the president is going to. Uh, uh, remark on it you know yeah i i I gotta say i mean i'm not going to necessarily fault joe biden for this but this is every single presidency i know it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse so you have to comment on everything so i i just tweeted that he was going to comment on the bridge which would make it right and um and then what was it? And then there's a, and then there's a traffic jam that he needs to uh, remark on, and um, uh, there were some students who who wanted to meet him. There are a lot of things. At president's remarking on everything. What the heck? You know, I, I it's just uh, not just him. You're right. It, it, they all of them, but it's gotten worse with him because he's so desperate to be seen remarking coherently well i mean it's it's almost like having a commentator in chief and again (laughs) that's a great phrase (laughs) it kind of is isn't it it's kind of like having a commentator in chief and and it's not just this administration this goes back as far as i can remember if there's something notable the president has been briefed on it in this case i will give a little slack to this because i don't think people I don't think people comprehend just how bad this is going to be for a while. I mean, certain. I mean, at last I looked, there were still six people missing that they knew of, and they're still yeah. trying to find them. So that's they they rescued a couple of people. Yeah, and right there up. were six six member pothole crew fixing that is missing still. Um, but the uh, what was the magnitude of what a president comments on? has been lowered and lowered and lowered and lowered. And now with a president who's desperate to be seen saying anything coherently, um, he's commenting on virtually everything. And uh, hopefully it goes off without him um, saying, well, he'll he'll no doubt remember his house fire while he's talking about it, because that was a tragedy. Well, he'll also remember the, he'll also remember the, period of time where he was a pilot for container ships um and <laughs> to navigate the... <laughs> and what happens when a ship loses power yeah yeah, yeah. The, yeah uh, that came right after the semi-truck driver career yeah, exactly yeah and it was right after uh, you know it's right after uh having neil kinnock's life grafted onto his body i mean it's i mean yeah, yeah we, we can yeah. only we can only shudder at what he's actually going to try to say and how he's actually going to try to use this. It is, however, going to be a big problem for the federal government and for Biden, because the port of Baltimore is one of the busier, you know, import export shipping ports in the United States. 
it is a very it's an important one for the economy and that bridge is now sitting where ships yeah, are getting out there's no getting in and out of that port right now and there may yeah. not be for several weeks maybe even months yeah. uh, a clear passage which means well, they can't ho- have a supply hopefully, chain hopefully when the uh, when the smoke clears the flag will still be flying i'm sure that that will be the case and somebody asked me today on twitter do you think that they'll rename the bridge? Um, do you think that they'll keep the name Francis Scott Key Bridge when they rebuild it? I'm like, well, you know, we have 729 problems with uh, with what's going on in Baltimore, and I put that somewhere around 675 <laughs> at the moment. But <laughs> probably. I mean, there. I mean, you had to specify that this was the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. I had to make sure I, I got that correct because there's a francis scott key bridge over the potomac in washington too oh and it's a very different bridge um that one's a stone bridge i think if i remember correctly this is a this was a steel bridge and um i saw I mean, the video and boy that the whole thing just boom well again you know those bridges you know and maybe there'll be some discussion of the design of the bridges but i just don't know how you get around the fact that you're going to have to put those things on pillars that are quite a distance apart so you can get shipping in and out um it's either that or you reroute the interstate so you're not going over the bay and um or like yeah it's the bay there at that point in time but um the um you know i don't know how you can make a bridge strong enough to withstand an impact of a 948 foot fully loaded container barge plowing directly into it apparently you know under you know port speed um and so i don't think that the issue here is going to be bridge integrity it's really just going to be what happened on well, the well if, if joe's on the case it will get fixed pretty quickly <laughs> if pete Buttigieg is on the case he's oh. probably going to take another he's probably going to take another paternity leave at some point in time during this crisis <laughs> I mean, this, these guys don't know how to handle a supply chain uh, crisis. They spent, sure, the first yeah. two, they spent the first two years of the presidency booting it and ending up with runaway inflation as a result, as part, you know, a, a contributing yeah. back. Runaway yeah. Inflation. So that's what I'm saying. This may end up being a bigger deal. Oh, I'm uh, sure it is. Yeah. Than, yeah. Than one might and, it, and if if it was a deal that happened in St. Louis, it wouldn't be anywhere near as important as something that happens in the East Coast. That's always I mean, much more important. Well, it is because that's that's a Democrat stronghold, right? Maryland is not a Maryland's not a, a purple state. Maryland is a blue state. But They're Governor big- Governor Hogan will fix it when he becomes senator. Well, former Governor Hogan. Yeah. Well, and this we, is, we have to use the honorific. Ed. Well, we do have to use the honorific. But I mean, it's a it's a progressive Democrat who's governor there right now. I can't think of his name, um, but um, he kind of wanted a walkover. Uh, I think he won by like thirty points in the, in the previous election. Once Hogan decided to retire, well, he's on an island vacation, so um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, there will be federal. Vacations. There'll be federal involvement in the rebuilding here. It's not going to just be a Maryland well, thing. Oh, thank that's God. Yeah. That's a federal interstate thing, right? Oh, and it yeah. was, it's, we had the bridge collapse in Minneapolis in 2007. And people were, you know, conservatives were being accused of hypocrisy because we were wondering, you know, when the federal government was going to, you know, get its act together. This during the Bush administration. And I had to point out to people on my blog at the time, Captain's Quarters, that, you know, it's a federal interstate. And because it's a federal interstate, the state has to defer to the federal government on things like, you know, construction, design, <laughs> that sort of thing. They, they've got, they've got, you know, and, and the federal government has to invest money in that because it's their, it's their footprint, that Eisenhower right. interstate system. And this is this applies here too. It's a spur off of the ninety off of Interstate ninety five, but it's still a federal um, it's a federal funded highway. So it'll be yeah. a blend. It'll be a blend. You know, in in two thousand seven, Tim Pawlenty bid this out uh, 
in fact, I'm not sure if he bid it out or if it was a no contract bid, but he loaded it up with huge amounts of incentives to get it reconstructed fast and well. And they did a great job. They did. They got it back up in a matter of months. This is more complicated because it's yeah. most over a body of water. And you uh, got to get the, the wreckage out first. You got to get the wreckage out first. Then you have to then you have to get the materials. And then when you're building it, you're going to be blocking that channel again. Uh, at least for part of the time that you're doing the rebuilding. I, I mean, the city of Baltimore is really going to have a problem here. Well, and, th and thank God Joe is involved. Or <laughs> thank, thank God he's remarking on being involved. I think you know, maybe you should hire Tim Pawlenty. I don't think he's doing much these days. <laughs> I like Tim. I still miss Tim in politics. Tim was a fun guy to have in politics. Yeah, he was. He was. I remember him on a cold winter day announcing his campaign and brief campaign in front of the Iowa State Capitol building. Oh, yeah. The Ames Pole. The Ames Straw Pole. That's where it died, too. I was there. Yeah, I was windy. Okay, yeah. well, uh, well, now that we've wrapped up the most important news, Ed, you got any jokes? Oh, we're not <laughs> there yet. <laughs> Although I can talk about what Tim Pal Tim Palente used to like to tease me in public, right? Yeah, yeah we, we, were, we were on friendly basis. I mean, it was all it was all friendly. It was all good natured. I mean, he was at he was at CPAC and he was talking to the he, he was addressing the the bloggers in the room at CPAC. And he turned to me and he says, are you going to, I think, I think it was one of the times that Marsha was there and he says, are you going to, are you going to take your wife out to dinner? Or are you going to be cheap as always? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then later on, he says, I hope you didn't mind. I said, no, 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 man. I love that stuff. That's great. <laughs> I thought that was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, he it, seemed like a fairly normal guy, which he of was. Course, immediately ruled him out. Well, that's the problem with people from Minnesota is that they're fairly normal people, um, and Minnesota rewards pe Minnesota rewards politicians that aren't too pushy, aren't too self-aggrandizing, and those are the things that don't play well on the national stage. And that's the reason yeah. why Minnesota politicians really have really struggle to succeed any anywhere outside of the state of Minnesota. It's just a different culture. Yeah, ask um, Walter Mondale. You know, Walter Mondale was probably one of the more successful ones. At least he got on a t well, it, and, and Hubert Humphrey, both of them got onto tickets as running mates and became vice presidents. Um, I take that back. Mondale, I, Humphrey didn't become vice president, but he got into he got onto the national ticket as a running mate. Um, no, he yeah, uh, he, he was he was he was nominated for president, right? It's yes. Just, yeah. That yeah. was the, the 68 riot. Uh, yeah. That big 68 riot. So yeah, Humphrey, but Humphrey made it onto the ticket because it was basically a brokered convention out of necessity because yeah. Bobby Kennedy had been assassinated. LBJ had decided not to run. So you had to have the brokered convention out of necessity and Hubert Humphrey came out of it. But I mean, he was an interesting guy. I, uh, I mean, he was a fun, like you say, normal not normal, but he was a fun, semi-normal person. And I, I spent a day with, or part of a day with him and when he ran again in 72. And uh, he was just, it was at his house outside Minneapolis. Yeah. And, yeah. and I had promised not to annoy the press guy all weekend if he gave me an interview on Monday, which he did at the house. And Muriel was there, and Humphrey decided, I'm going to go for a swim before I go campaigning. So he came out, he changed into his swimsuit, and he came out, and Muriel said, oh, Hubert, really, you're not going to wear that old swimsuit, are you? <laughs> it was so lightly. <laughs> and for the photographer, he got on the diving board and pulled himself up to look over the end. It was a wonderful, wonderful picture. Well, uh, yeah, you know, and again, mostly regular, mostly regular folks. And those are the people who succeed in, in Minnesota. And it just that it doesn't work. And that was the that was the only state that Mondale got in 84. 
it was there were other reasons for that of course but it it was and um and for that matter mondale technically was the nominee was the nominee of a brokered convention 1984 was a was an open convention for democrats it just wasn't dramatic I didn't, I it was didn't dramatic that. Uh, yeah he didn't have enough delegates on the first ballot and i think that um I don't remember. It was some. It wasn't a competition, right? They got in there and they made Mondale the nominee, but he hadn't, as I recall. And of course, this is forty years ago. Uh, as I recall, Mondale hadn't actually wrapped up um, enough delegates to win on the first ballot. But I think that people got together and decided that they didn't really want to have, you know, a replay of 1968. It wasn't going to be a replay of nineteen sixty eight anyway. But they just wanted to get on with it, if I recall yeah. correctly. And who wanted and who wanted to go uh, under the Reagan bus? So yeah. Well, that you know that was the thing too. Is I mean, it's kind of a strange choice because he was basically representing the Carter presidency. Yeah, yeah. When, he was, when the Carter presidency was was so unsuccessful, and you know, Mondale was kind of a progressive in his uh, in in the context of that time, and yeah was a good contrast to reagan wasn't that the first time that he picked a woman for a running mate i think yes he picked uh geraldine ferraro yeah yeah he told me at a dinner once long after that as soon as reagan made that famous quip bottomed eve that reagan was not going to hold uh, mondale's youth against him mondale yeah. said i i knew at the moment i was laughing he said, but I knew at the moment I'd lost. Yeah, you know, I, I think that it was, I think it was over well before then, but that was the moment that Walter Mondale knew it was over. Um, yeah. 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 So. Um, and George H.W. Bush told me in 1999 that he knew two weeks out in uh 92 that he was going to lose uh i said two weeks sir how do you how do you get up in the morning <laughs> for the last two weeks of a campaign said, well you know you have to keep trying and you're the nominee in politics you never know what might happen yeah so, well yeah. you gotta play it out to the last inning it's like yeah it's, that's it's, right that's right that's right i'm not i've never won to go out to the parking lot in the third quarter i i, I will never ever do that so i, I okay. was just double checking my memory on this he didn't have enough of the pledge delegates to get past the first ballot the super delegates are what pulled him over the finish line gary hart actually had um 1200 delegates out of the close to 4000 that the um that the um democrats had at that time for their conventions and um so you know joe biden actually got a delegate in that um in that isn't uh, that election. wonderful and jesse yeah. jackson had 466 thomas eagleton had 18 george mcgovern had four delegates <laughs> george mcgovern 12 years after this disaster against uh against richard nixon so yeah you know you know when he was running uh when um, mondale no not mondale um mcgovern was running in 72 i went to his hometown and uh in um uh wherever he was from south dakota and uh, they had the corn palace there you know the famous corn palace Anyway, I went to the library and uh, checked on. He had written a book. <laughs> and in those days, the libraries had little cards in the back. So I, he had written a book and it was checked out on like April 18th, many years before. And it was returned on April 19th. <laughs> So I tried to find the person in town who checked it out to find out why they returned it, there, suspecting it was because it was boring, but I couldn't find them. Uh, <laughs> probably was. Yeah. Right, so I want to talk about something that's uh, a little bit more immediate, which is this meltdown that's going on over at 
NBC and MSNBC uh, over hiring Ronna McDaniel as yeah. a political analyst. Um, I mean, this is the same. Uh, this is the same network. You know, if you're NBC and MSNBC, MSNBC is clearly part of NBC News, so it's the same basic company. Um, that hired Jen Psaki right out of the White House as a political okay. analyst. All that right. hired, um, uh, is it Stephanie yeah. Simone, who was Bernie Sanders' chief of staff right after he dropped out of the race? Um, Donna and, Brazil. No, Donna Brazil, CNN. I take that back. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But they also have Al Sharpton. That's what holds them up. I, I was going to actually include Al Sharpton because... Yes, I mean, the knock on Ronna McDaniel is that she was cheering on the January 6th and, and defending the January 6th insurrection, uh, riots anyway, and has been defending them ever since. I'm not necessarily sure that that's completely accurate, um, but she has been trying to fund Donald Trump's defense of that because when she was RNC chair, it's criticizable. It's an interesting topic for discussion if she chose to discuss it on the air. But Al Sharpton actually authored not one, but two <laughs> riots, uh, one in Crown Heights and the other at Freddie's Fashion mm. Park in, yeah. uh, in New York City in the 1990s. Not to mention his, his, his ongoing unprosecuted tax delinquencies. And the Tawana Brawley rape hoax too, right? I mean, yeah. these are all... And they've had Al Sharpton on the air there continuously, I think, for 20 years now, ever since he ran for president and dropped out. That was um, when, what's yep. his name? The Yard, Howard Dean, the Yard. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was a 2004 cycle when that happened. And, um, and after that, Sharpton went to work for NBC slash MSNBC. And he's been there ever since. The Reverend Al Sharpton. And um, the self-proclaimed thing, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I don't know if he's got a real degree in divinity or not. It's, that's that's not even really the point. The point is that they're going after after Ronna McDaniel for a riot that happened in Washington D.C. and they've got got they got a guy who fomented not one but two deadly riots <laughs> as an activist Absolutely. in New York Absolutely. City. Both of them both of them pretty anti-Semitic and you know deliberately anti-Semitic. Um, well, the the thing that um, the bigger picture i think is this shows how the inmates are running the show are running the prisons yeah, great point. Uh, uh, the new york times uh, had that huge conflagration when they dared to publish an op-ed by uh senator cotton uh, calling for troops in terms of urban riots something which the democrat new york governor just did uh, but there was a huge uproar on on the internal Slack channel, and the Times editors and publisher caved, um, and they fired the people, and that's how Barry Weiss got out to be have her real success. Um, and they fired ben, uh, Benet, uh, Bennett, um, the editorial pages, the brother of the senator, Michael. Uh, because the staff, the woke staff, was complaining that publishing an op-ed by that Republican, conservative Republican, put their lives in danger. Please. Uh, so now here's NBC facing the same sort of staff uproar. And um, who was it that uh, came out? Um, there was a prominent anchor there who said that this shouldn't have happened chuck todd uh, yeah yeah right former you know who i know a little i know chuck todd a little um and uh he used to be on q's radio show as a regular um even after the meet the even after he became host of the meet the press but he's gotten kind of yeah. I, he's gotten kind of squirrely let's just put it that way and this is really I mean, this is really lame, especially given the the cast of characters that's already on the air at MSNBC. 
And, um, and, and I, it'd be one thing if you were saying, look, we really shouldn't be hiring people from other people's administration, from, from, from presidential administrations. But NBC does this all the time. Or you could say, we're not going to hire, you know, we're not going to hire. They uh, hired uh, George, George W. Bush's daughter. They hired George W. Bush's daughter. They hired uh, Nicole Wallace, who worked for George W. Bush. Um, uh, they hired, or no, uh, she worked for Sarah Palin, excuse me. Um, and they hired, um, oh gosh, I just had it in my head and I can't think of who it was that I was thinking of now. But, oh, um, Michael Steele, who was previously an RNC chair. And yeah. they're still there. And I like Michael Steele. I'm not saying that they shouldn't hire Michael Steele. Michael Steele's an interesting guy. Um, and, um, I think they should, if they want to hire them all, that's fine. But don't hire these people as analysts and think that you're not going to, that they're not going to come there and present spin, right? Yeah. They're either going to present the spin of the people that they used to work for, which is pretty much what Ronna McDaniel was going to do. I don't think Ronna McDaniel is going to go full Ken Melman or even full Michael Steele on these guys, or they're going to convert to whatever the narrative is. At, 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 on the platform because maybe they just feel inclined to do so and that's the reason why they're there in the first place and or they're because, getting some pretty money they're, they're getting yeah. money for, I, I don't i don't want to cast aspersions on their motivations or their integrity the, well donna brazil on cnn she she leaked the debate questions to uh, hillary clinton's that, campaign so that, that, is, that yeah. you're not you're not a journalist if you're uh, if you're doing that well, or an analyst, it, or a pundit, even you just uh, stay no, the hell out. Operative. You're, you're an operative. Yeah, an operative. That's what they are, and uh, people should know that. I think they probably do. How can they not? Unless they're robots. Well, again, I mean, in my mind, there's no journalistic integrity issue going on here. What it is, you don't like the point of view. Um, I mean, if you're if you've got Al Sharpton on your air, I don't think you have any room to talk about <laughs> about norms and journalistic integrity. There's not there isn't a journalistic bone in Al Sharpton's body. He's pure activist all the time, and that's fine if you want to highlight that. But then don't sit around and sniff at Ronna McDaniel, Mike, you know, having some sort of access to your airtime too i mean the whole thing is just really tawdry it's tawdry yeah well and here's the other question that i have well i actually have two other questions okay. what is it about rnc chairs that make them want to go be on msnbc <laughs> it's analysts i mean get, yeah andrew's doing the international sign of money i'm sorry i was talking so nobody got a chance to see that andrew but uh, that's what they, yeah that's true but uh you know ken melman went there michael Steele went there uh, now, Ronna McDaniel tried to go there. I'm sure that she's going to get the money. She's going to keep the money, I'm sure. Um, but then the second question, yeah, that's an easy question. So the second question is, what was N what was NBC thinking? Because they, I mean, they they made her the offer. The people at NBC Universal had to know that this was not going to be popular with their staff. I mean. Well, it's showbiz, you know, and so controversy. I was, I was, um, I was on a radio show and I, uh, for one of my books, and I got in, in a fairly strong argument with the host. And when I came out, the publicist was driving me to the next interview. And I said, Oh, I'm sorry. And she said, Are you kidding? That was great. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's not like they're looking for reasoned um, discussion of issues. They're looking for, you know, um, sword stabbings and, yeah. and, and bon mots that, uh, that people, people go, oh, that had to hurt. It, yeah, it's uh, kind of like it's kind of like it's show, it's showbiz, and that's one reason why Donald Trump has been so successful, is because he was an innate showman, and then he got his skills refined on Celebrity Apprentice. And I mean, he plays the media like a uh, like a violin, fine violinist. It's it's 
Uh, and it works because they're so playable and predictable. Well, and that's what these channels exist for, right? Honestly, yeah. these channels exist. Yeah, if you don't get a crowd in, you're gone. So yeah, uh, how know, do you best get a crowd in and keep them? I mean, do you remember Crossfire? Oh, God. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson and... Um, Oh, who is his partner? Tucker Carlson and oh, was uh, a Pat Buchanan for a while, wasn't it? Well, they would uh, have been on the same side. Tucker Carlson, no, it was somebody on the left. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I mean but they were all the arguing. Set up this. It wasn't just crossfire either. They were all sort of uh, set up this way. You know, Hannity and um, Holmes, right? Ellen, yeah, Ellen? yeah. Uh, Holmes, had, Holmes, Holmes. Yeah, Hannity and Holmes. You had. I couldn't stand Alan Holmes and. Um, I, I was invited on his radio show. It may rest in peace. I was invited on his radio show and he was just absolutely nasty. Um, and um, uh, who was the other one? I mean, um, Ron Reagan and Monica Crowley had an oh, MSNBC yeah. show. And, and I remember this. It didn't last long. And again, it was one of those left-right combinations. So you could have arguments. And I remember this because it was my very first television appearance. Oh, and and they were very sweet to me. MSN, you know, I, I I ended up being on MSNBC a number of times, right? And they were always very nice. The people there are really good with their guests, and they want you to do well. And they are not. They try not to be political with you at all. They just really want you to have a good time. So. I, I've always had very fond memories of this, including the first time when apparently I looked like a corpse. <laughs> I barely <laughs> moved. And um, it was so bad. It was so bad that um, that my mother actually offered, she said, you know, honey, if, if you want, I could try to get you some um, some media coaching uh, so for your next time. <laughs> uh. That's that's when you know you hadn't done a, a good job, and I learned a few lessons from that. And yeah, but Ron Reagan and Monica Crowley were very nice to me. But I mean, the, but their shows were set up for that kind of false or you know, not false conflict, but staged conflict, right? Yeah, it's all yeah. about the conflict, and it still is. It's just that they do it differently these days. Jane, you ignorant slut. Yeah, kind yeah. of. I mean, you can go back to that sixty minutes. Um, was that called Crossfire? That was no. I was uh, some. Something counter something. I can't remember what it was called on Counter Counterpoint. Counterpoint. Point counterpoint. Point counterpoint. Yeah. And um and you can take it back to then. It was a very popular little when I I was uh, when I would promote my books, uh I I went to CBS very early one morning, and I'm not good in the early morning, but you walk into the green room and there's this huge smorgasbord laid out. And I said, well, this is okay. Nice breakfast. Uh, and this woman comes around with a tray and I said, what's that? And she said, champagne. I said, champagne? It's 6.55 in the morning. <laughs> she said, it's the guest talking looser. Yeah. So I mean that's a yeah. whole strategy. It's a whole strategy. So and well, I so yeah, I, so I always wondered what was in those cups on the Johnny Carson show. Well, that's a good question too. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I've been in studio with MSNBC. I've been remote MSNBC. And doesn't matter, they're always they're always really first class. I, I gotta say that about them. They're always really first class with people. I was on So you're making a pitch you want to be on tomorrow morning. Oh God, no! <laughs> you know, actually, I, I probably could figure out uh, a place where I could get to a studio because I'm sure they wouldn't want to do it with the with the setup here. That's the other thing too, is that they were pretty particular. They really wanted a professional setting. You couldn't just do video from your house. They wanted you to yeah. go to an actual studio, and yeah. they would find it for you. They, would, you know, um, but and, uh, and send a nice car. They did. Uh, was, they would send a nice car for you. It was actually <laughs> damn cool. Yeah, yeah. You didn't get paid for it, but you got the perks, right? They'd send a nice car. <laughs> That's right. And I asked them about that. I said, you know, I could drive myself down there. They said, no, no, no. We prefer to send a car. I said, why? They said, because that way we make sure you're there. <laughs> you're there. That's right. Exactly right. 
<laughs> you don't get said, it. That's smart thinking. That is smart yeah. thinking. You know, yeah. also because you know, mostly <laughs> downtown areas, right? Yeah, and yeah. I go to WCCO's studios for the MSNBC hits. That's they they would rent a little, you know, a little yeah. sub studio there. And if you couldn't find parking, you'd be circling the block a lot. <laughs> car. This is Ed car. Morrissey you'd... reporting from his yeah. 1956 Mercury. <laughs> yeah, you know, so they uh, they tried to avoid that. And it's worth the it's worth the cost of the car to do that. They're they're not paying you, but they're spending money. Yeah, yeah. On that. So yeah. yeah, no, it's 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 it really is. They 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 do a nice job of that but what they don't do a nice job of uh, especially on msnbc is really looking for uh well-based contradictory points of view fox actually does a better job of this than msnbc does fox does a better job of this than cnn does for all the flack that fox gets of being the right wing network the trump maga trump they actually do have people who come in and routinely defend the progressive left. And, and they do it, it rather, they're well-spoken. It's not just well -spoken, well -spoken. Right. What, what MSNBC does is they find, and I, I, I mean, I'm using this term mostly jokingly, they find apostates, right? People who used to be conservative, but no, but now want to talk about how, yeah. The, you know, Reagan could never get nominated in this Republican Party. Well, there's a reason yeah. for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's perfect. probably couldn't nominate a dead person. Somebody who's been dead for 30 years. I don't think we'd nominate that person. But I mean, that's that's kind of what N MSNBC does and NBC does. And I think if Ron McDaniel had, decide, had come out prior to being hired by anybody and declared that she was not going to endorse Donald Trump, that she thought it was a huge mistake, that the Republican Party was renominating Donald Trump and that the and that they needed to uh, disavow themselves from the January 6th riot, which you know they pretty much have anyway. Um, I think that MSNBC and NB well, I think MSNBC would have been happy to have her on any of their shows and they would have paid more yeah they might have paid more right i think the reason i think the biggest issue here is that apparently mcdaniel is not going to be is not going to go the apostate right route at least not right off the bat um and that's i think that's really what i think that's really what is irritating <sighs> so biz isn't it and here we are at the peak of media stardom on our podcast and oh yeah this is it <laughs> yeah i am and i want to assure you i am not going the apostate route ed well neither am i oh, well. that's why we're going to continue doing this <laughs> podcast <laughs> rather than get our own show on msnbc but you know people say oh well you just i mean this is I, I just really briefly before we get to the jokes of the week i mean you'll get this on I'm sure you get this. I get this on on social media from time to time. Oh, you're just mouthing this the Salem corporate line. You're just mouthing the Salem. Yeah, Salem yeah. Line. It's like no. I mean, there isn't really a Salem corporate line. <laughs> you know, that's right. We, there's a we have a wide range of viewpoints. They're on the right. Yeah, we have a wide range of viewpoints at at Salem, and we have people who don't agree with each other very much at all who get Salem airtime or who get, you know, Salem, you know, or town hall web time and stuff like that. Um, you know, obviously if you're going to be, if you're going to go full left progressive, it's probably not the place for you, but there isn't really a corporate line or we're told to support this one person over another person. No, I've never had no, that happen at Salem. No, no. I, I've never, uh, I don't, I don't remember anybody leaning on me except to say you know feel free to let it rip you know that kind yeah. of thing no i mean you know the 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 big thing is is don't insult the readers don't insult their intelligence and don't insult them period oh yeah um, right. i was thinking of broadcast but no uh, oh yeah 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 here, no no i'll tell you what the big salem thing was and it was when i first started doing the northern alliance, northern alliance radio network this is 20 years ago right because this is this month it was 20 years ago this month well, that we started doing the blogger radio show in the Twin Cities. 
And our big thing was we asked, we started asking, can we say this on the air? Can we say that on the air? And they told us, and it's, you know, this is a Salem radio station in the Twin Cities that was we were doing this with. So my affiliation with Salem goes back well before the blog, before hot air anyway. And um, they said, basically, if you can find the word in the Bible, you can say it on the air. <laughs> and if it's okay. not the Bible, you might want to think twice. It's like, <laughs> so he said, so hell, he said, hell and damn. Yeah, you can say that. Ass, yes. You could say ass, it's in the Bible. Um, you'd say anything else and you might get in trouble. Just going to tell you right now. It's like, okay, man, that's, 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 that was pretty fair. Um, but other than that, no, I mean, we didn't, we didn't get pronouncements. We didn't get edicts. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not going to turn apostate, but I'll tell you this. If I decided that I wanted to turn apostate, if I suddenly wanted to turn myself into a progressive, I know that at least in the short term, I could make a lot of money doing it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's absolutely. where the financial yeah. incentives are. There's yeah. there are financial incentives the other direction too. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to deny that. But I think the financial incentives and the social incentives are far more um, higher scale going from conservative to progressive than it is going from progressive to conservative. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right. Well, that brings us to the jokes of the week because we, well, we probably should wrap this up. I got a, I got a couple. Okay. <clears throat> What's worse than a bunch of ants in your pants? <laughs> a bunch uh, of a bunch of uncles <laughs> i like that twist that's, that's Jay, pretty... this is old jay leno says uh dorothy young uh, has died at the age of 103 she was uh the stage assistant of the famous magician harry houdini and her last words were Ta da! <laughs> I, I just love that one. I love that one. Uh, and let's see, I got uh, I got one more. It says, um, well, obviously these are old, but uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin has received the coronavirus vaccine. He actually wanted to do it weeks ago. But they had to wait for the healthcare worker's hand to stop shaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that would definitely be yes. Yeah. Talk <laughs> about apostate. <laughs> Off with their right. heads. Yeah. I got one yeah. joke for you from jokesoftheday.net. A woman's walking down the road and a voice shouts out, Don't take a step further. So she freezes and a ton of bricks falls in the place where she was just about to step. She thinks she imagined this and she keeps walking until the voice calls out again, don't take a step further. So she stops again and a car skids right past her. And she goes, who is this? And the voice says, I'm your guardian angel and I will warn you before something bad happens to you. Says, Do you have any questions for me? She says, yeah, where were you on my wedding day? <laughs> oh. <laughs> And with that, that'll be the end of today's podcast. We didn't get to the red state columns over there, but he's Andrew's got a couple of good red uh, red state um, entries over there in the VIP section. Uh, Democrat plots to finally evict Trump from haunting their lives. <laughs> um, he calls that Operation Crush, and then um, his. Um, um, Malcolm on the right is why would West Point want to drop its duty, honor, country mantra? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Beach yeah. is kind of all over that for us at hot air, but definitely go over to redstate.com, check that out. And uh, and if you need to find out how to do that, you just go to the Prince of Twitter's bio on Twitter X at AH Malcolm on the Twitters is, and uh, or you uh, or you can go to redstate.com and look it up. And of course, uh, it's always great talking to the Prince of Twitter and the Regent of RedState.com, Andrew Malcolm. Okay. We'll do this again next week, sir. Okay, thank you, Ed. See you, everybody.